Interest rates are not going down. The Bank of Canada decided not to lower the interest rate. No surprise, and here's why. The prime rate has been at 5% ever since July last year, and it makes sense to keep it there for at least another few months. It's what the banks use to decide what their rates will be for the two common types of mortgage rates, which are variable and fixed. And the bank's decision to make no change in March pretty much lines up with what we expected. The goal of higher interest rates is to slow down the economy and bring down inflation. This takes time. And even though we're now below the bank's target of less than 3%, for inflation, it doesn't prompt a rush to bring down the rates just yet. If anything, we could see rate cuts as early as April 10th when the Bank of Canada makes their next decision. But here's the takeaway. There's no more talk about rising interest rates. There also seems to be less worries about inflation getting out of hand. Now, it's all about when to bring down the rates and by how much. The Bank of Canada only has six more opportunities to lower the prime rate this year. That's in April, June, July, September, October, and December. Even if they lower the prime rate by 25 basis points each time. That works out to be a 1.5% drop to 3.5% before the end of this year. The last time we saw 3.5% was back in September 2022, when the prime rate kept going up over the course of 10 consecutive rate hikes. But they likely would not hold the prime rate at 3.5% when the economy has stabilized. And we could also see rates go down by more than 25 basis points at some of these decisions. Just like what we saw in March 2020 when the central bank dropped the prime rate from 1.75 to 0.25% in just three weeks weeks. But right now, there's no urgency to bring down the prime rate just yet, and I don't think an aggressive rate reduction is needed this year. But at least now, we're starting to see positive news about the economy slowing down and inflation coming down. Canada's annual inflation rate came down by more than expected to 2.9% in January, which marks the first time in seven months that inflation has dipped below 3%. This kind of news creates more optimism around interest rate cuts that could happen as soon as April. But the decision today to hold it means that there's still a risk if the prime rate is brought down too soon. I think it's definitely a better idea to hold the rate in April as well because even though inflation is down, it could be like what we saw in June last year when inflation was actually down to 2.8% but ended going up again to 4% just two months later. So we can't see this happen all over again. It would be too soon to bring down the rate. So by July this year, it would be an entire 12 month period if the rate is held at 5%. That might sound like a long time, but it's nothing compared to the last time the bank held a high interest rate for this long after several increases. In December 2018, the bank held the rate at 1.75% for 15 months until March 2020. It's crazy thinking back to 2017 when the prime rate was 1.75%. Back then, the average Toronto home price was floating around $730,000. Seven years later, and here we are today with an average price of a million dollars for a house in Toronto and interest rates at more than triple what they were in 2017. And despite this, the share of likely home buyers this year stayed the same compared to last year. That's surprising, but the timing of the survey also matters because it's possible they didn't know what was in store for 2024 in terms of the prime rate coming down. People who responded to the survey for the Toronto Real Estate Board said that they were unlikely to purchase a home this year and also said that mortgage rates would have to go down before they would consider entering the market. Well, they're getting what they want because those declining mortgage rates are likely to happen this year. Not many people know that mortgage rates have already started to come down since last year, so why wouldn't they this year? You can probably expect a bunch of buyers re-entering the housing market. This unfortunately is going to get paired up with the ongoing narrative of a lack of supply. The same survey showed that only 14% of home buyers are very likely to list their home for sale this year, which is a drop of 4% since last year. So if supply is tight and buyers are getting back into the market, you can expect home prices to only go in one direction. That's exactly why I said in my last video that this year is a year of transition. The first half of 2024 is not the best time for sellers to be in the market. It is, however, still a great time for buyers. Just look at the trends. All sales for all four home types, that's detached, semis, towns, and condos, are all down. The average price across all of these home types are also down. Every single region in the GTA is seeing lower sales compared to the previous year. Add in the fact that supply is low, with new listings being down, and you've got yourself the perfect mixture to create a seller's market in the near future. So should the Bank of Canada be lowering interest rates in April or June this year? Let me know in the comments and if you're gaining value from this video, consider subscribing to the channel and let's get back to it. When the home buying frenzy kicks off, which it will either this year or next year, we'll be in that part of real estate cycles where prices are going back up. Fast forward to a few years later and we'll be right back to where we are today. So whenever the Bank of Canada decides to drop interest rates, I really hope they don't do it as fast as they put them up and instead gradually bring them down. Because if they don't, we'll see a shock in the market with rising home prices a lot sooner than later. Believe it or not, we have an affordability crisis. In fact, I went to an event recently where I got to hear the CEO of the Toronto Real Estate Board, John D. Michelle, speak about the current market. He went on to say that if you're spending more than 30% of your income on housing, that's considered to be 
an unaffordable housing situation. So for instance, the average home buyer this year is targeting to put down 32% based on the latest TREB survey. If you're buying a home this year in Toronto for a million dollars and you put down 32%, that's a $680,000 mortgage balance. At today's mortgage rates of about 6%, your mortgage payment is about $4,000 per month. Add in some property taxes and utilities. Let's average this out to about $4,500 per month. You would need a household income of about $250,000 before taxes to afford a million dollar house that's considered affordable. I think a $250,000 household income is above average in Toronto, which also makes sense since home prices are not in line with average salaries. But don't worry because this is probably more on the conservative side. Banks and other lenders have a different way of calculating how much you can afford based on your household income. So make sure that if you are in the market, you're going to your bank or a mortgage broker as a first step to get pre-approved to find out exactly how much can you afford based on your current income, expenses, and your entire financial situation. So which side of the fence are you on? Are you anticipating rates to go down this year or do you think they should stay where they are? Let me know in the comments and if you gain value, subscribe to the channel. I'm Fred Tam, real estate broker in Toronto. New videos are out every single week to help you reach your real estate goals. Appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.